Hello there everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Kadwa Shoujo. I walk in hoping that this really will... Whoa, 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 let's try that again. <laughs> Three, two, one. Hi guys, and welcome back to Let's Play. My phone going off because I pre-ordered a Lucas Amiibo and now I'm getting the confirmation email. Alright. That's not the name of the game, by the way. I walk in, hoping that this really will be only a quick visit, like the teacher said. On a white door on the left is a green cross with the text, Head Nurse, and a nameplate. A voice from the inside responds to my knock almost immediately, but I can't quite make it out. It sounded a bit like an invitation to open the door, so I invite myself further in. Don't you hate that? When you hear something and you're not exactly sure, so you just go with your gut says, whenever I do that... I'm going to say 90% of the time, I actually pick the wrong one. Even if it's just a choice of two things, I always pick the wrong one. The room is not large, and it smells strange. Probably like, you know, a hospital. I hate hospital smells. A friendly-looking man turns around on, a, on his office chair to face me as I enter. His desk is neat and tidy, but the bin under the table is overflowing with used medical utensils, and there are at least a dozen coffee cup rings lingering on the desk. Hello there, what can I do for you today? Says Smiling Man. He is young looking and sort of rugged, but the dimples in his cheeks wash that impression away when he smiles. Erm, um, are you the nurse? His sow asks to the guy in the very clear lab coat. He smiles like a person who has heard this very question hundreds of times. Why yes I am, it says on the door, no? You can call me by my name or just the nurse like everyone else. Of course. I shake off my confusion, realizing I should probably grab his extended hand. His handshake is rather firm and friendly. They say you can learn a lot about a person from a handshake, so... You know, it's like you, you shake someone's hand and they just totally crush the hell out of it? I hate people like that. Don't do that. Handshakes are supposed to be nice, not destroy your entire fingers. Well, it's not really fingers. It's more the, the section between the, the, the fingers and the thumb on both sides. I'm just going to stop talking now. Right, er, I'm a new student, and my homeroom teacher told me to come meet you. My name is Hasao Nakai. His eyes light up with revelation, and he snaps his fingers. Oh, you're that Nakai. I was just reading your file in the morning. I don't like it when people who normally have their eyes closed all the time open them up. It freaks me out. A at least in anime, you know, it's different in real life. Uh, because people don't. Whatever. Some kind of, uh, chronic arrhythmia and related congenital heart muscle deficiency, right? I'm so glad I took science class and all that means. He gestures me to sit down in a vacant armchair in front of his desk. It, yeah. Good. Well, you've probably been briefed about the school enough, so I'll just go over this quickly. We have all kinds of facilities available, mostly physical therapy and such. There's always someone from my staff around, even at night, so never hesitate to call us if there's a problem. The famous 24-hour nursing staff. Wow, this is like a hospital. Well, not exactly. For example, we don't do brain surgery here. His joke feels so out of place that I'm left thinking why he even said it. Yeah, just that it's really weird to have so many medical people at a school. He'll get used to it. I'm not sure of that myself, but I don't let the nurse know it. Now, let me just find your file again. While well, he searches for something that is com something from his computer and shuffles stacks of papers around, let my gaze wander around the room. It's the epitome, sorry, epitome of generic. Okay, I've always said epitome when I read it. I know it's not, because I, as a kid I would always say epitome, and finally my mom, who's an English teacher, said to me, you know it's epitome, right? And I'm like, how come you're telling me this now? And I'm like, I knew the word epitome before, but I didn't know it was spelled that way. The epitome of generic, I'd like to say. Beige walls and ce uh, ceiling, dark gray laminate flooring, and all the equipment you'd expect from a school nurse's office. Even the ridiculous educational posters hanging on all four walls reminding me to eat properly, three times a day and from all the food groups, which apparently has changed now. It's weird, I've- we were in a class and they're like, they've changed the food guide stuff, and it's like, now it's, I think only three food groups, and like, it's not three- it's not three times a day, it's like six times a day, but like smaller portions. It's weird, I don't get this health stuff. Smiling, the nurse draws a thick file from a stack of similarly thick files and opens it. 
So you already have medication for arrhythmia. Just remember to take your pills every morning and evening, or it won't help. Or it won't be much help. Apart from that, uh, do you do any sports rash stuff like I don't know boxing? He grins to his own joke, but I don't. I know people say don't grin, don't grin or laugh at your own jokes, but I I, I kind of do that all the time, and I don't have any problem with it because it means you know you're funny. Eh, well, I played soccer occasionally with some classmates. All right, I'm gonna. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to re recommend you refrain from doing that, at least for the time being. Good, cause soccer is stupid. Oh, my lack of reaction makes him raise an eyebrow. But really, I'm not too bothered by him forbidding me to kick a ball around. I guess it never did bring out a burning passion for the sport. Just to have something to do. Any kind of concussion might be very dangerous to your heart, and risking another attack is not a good idea. Was the previous one caused by a sudden concussion to the chest area? There's no mention of the cause in your papers. Er, not exactly. I sidestep the question acceptably, and he glances at me over his papers with a more serious expression on his face, looking a lot like Brock from Pokemon now. Still, you have to keep your body healthy, so some exercise would do you good. We have the physical therapy available, and... Oh, physical therapy and such available, as I said but I don't really think you need such heavy, heavy measures. Just get some light exercise regularly. Brisk walks or even light jogging, jumping rope, that sort of thing. Swimming maybe? There's a pool here. Swimming is the best exercise and you can't convince me otherwise. So I was told. You were? Very good. At any rate, I'm sure you've been told this before. You need to take care not to overexert yourself. He wags his finger to emphasize the point. No need really, I've heard this a thousand times already. Absolutely no unnecessary risks. Take care of yourself. Okay. He goes over my papers one time and sets them on a desk. Obviously content. Good. That's it then. Come meet me if you need anything. Or need something. I'm ushered out before I even realize it. A quick visit indeed. I end up standing in front of the main building and the, and the auxiliary building, although to my eyes, they still look one and the same. It's the first real good look I get at the other students, so I watch people coming out of the school going towards the gate or the dorms. Everyone seems to know where they are going, and I still keep thinking that most of them don't look too special for being students at a special school. Then again, neither do I. Does that make me one of them? One of us? I should go somewhere to prevent me from getting lost. Not only in my own thoughts, but, you know, spatially. It's around dinner time, but I feel tired instead of hungry. The weariness in me only grows as I trudge towards the dorms, set a little way apart from the main building complex. There's a garden of sorts between the school and the dorms. Shrubbery, flowers, and the overbearing smell of fresh cut grass that fills the atmosphere. This game makes me sad that we're in winter now. <laughs> There's no green anywhere outside. It dawns on my tired mind and that the smell feels novel because I haven't been outside for at all for so long. The dorm building is big and made of red brick. Like the others, it feels too pompous for what it is, so I push forward going inside. You gotta say, when I did Rin's story, I got so used to this background. It like 90% of it takes place here. It takes more than more time than necessary to fish the key, fish out the key I was given from my pocket. Room 119. Despite the ornate exterior, the inside of the dorm is fairly new, functional, and boring. Just like in the main building, the halls and doors are wide enough to accommodate wheelchairs. The same goes for the elevators at the ends of the hallways. I poke my head around the corner of the common room door. Inside are a few students watching television. One nods and gives a quick hello before turning back to the TV. Seems that the seems that only the girls around here are sociable. I suppose that's perfectly fine for me. You see him like popping his collar and getting all ready. I climb the stairs to the upper floor. Here, small corridors branch off from the main hallway. Each of these minor halls seems to have a toilet and shower as well as four rooms. About halfway down the hall, I spy room 199. The nameplates on the rooms adjacent to mine are blank. I guess there are just the two of us here. Light shines from a below the door of room 117, so I knock lightly. Hello, is anyone home? 
From inside, I hear a few moments, then the clicking of way more locks than I thought that these doors had. After a moment, the door squeaks open. A bespectacled boy is standing there in the doorway. He is looking at me very intently through extremely thick glasses. Who is it? Blind? No, at least not completely. Why would he have eyeglasses if he was? He leans closer to me until our nose are almost touching. His breath stinks of garlic. Uh, his sound Akai. I'm moving into the next room. I thought I should introduce my... His face suddenly brightens in realization and he stands back upright, thrusting his hand out in a smiling greeting, almost straight to my diaphragm. Oh, sup dude. The name's Kenji. Ah, hi. I take Kenji's sweaty hand and shake it, still a little rattled by the sudden change of attitude and vehement welcome. There are some suspicious looking people going in and out of your room earlier. It's probably my parents. Your parents? You sure? Because they could have been some other people too. You can't judge a book by its cover. His out of place proverb is left hanging between us as awkwardly as I try to think of some way to respond. I say the chances are high enough. He shudders and makes some exaggerated hand gestures. You're a brave man, Hisao. Me? I don't think I could trust the chances. The only one I trust is myself. Does that mean I shouldn't get to know you either? He thinks about this for a while. A wise decision. Damn, you are smarter than you look. Probably. What do you look like? I hope not smart. He squints his eyes and leans closer again, but I lean backwards to dodge it. Never mind, doesn't matter. With that, he turns, fumbles around for a moment in search of the door handle, and shuts the door behind him. I slide the key. We're just gonna ignore that that exchange happened. We're just- okay. Okay, sure. Kenji's my favorite character. Not that I agree with the stuff he says later. But man, just reading everything he says is hilarious. I love him so much. I slide the key, also he looks like me, kind of. I could pull off, I could cosplay him. I could. I won't, but I could. I slide the key into the lock of the door marked 119. Bleak beige walls, white linen, a desk made up of some type of light wood, ugly curtains. It's no one's room, impersonal, like my hospital room was. My bags are sitting at the foot of my bed, looking a lot emptier than they did this morning. The closet is sitting open, stocked with my clothes. Also, it seems there are a number of school uniforms hanging there as well. A note is pinned to the sleeve of one of the shirts. Hi, Hee-chan. We've unpacked your things and made your bed. They said that if these don't fit, the if they said if these don't fit, then you should go to the office tomorrow. If you have any problems, you can always call us. Love, Mom and Dad. Well, at least I don't have to worry about unpacking. That's nice. That's a major convenience. I kind of hoped I would have, then there would be something to do. It's still too early. I put the note down on the desktop and lie on the bed, feeling drained. Lying there just makes me want to read something, but I have nothing with me. I wonder if the hospital conditioned me from wanting to read whenever I have nothing to do. And the restless urge just keeps growing until I have to stand up. Maybe it's stress or something. I was pretty nervous about it before coming, and for the entire day too. I still am, I think. Damn, I have to distract myself somehow, so I won't be this unnatural all the time. Tomorrow, I'll go borrow some books from the library. Yeah, I'll do that. But for now... The bottles of medications neatly arranged on my night table catch my eye. I pick up one and shake it just to hear the contents rattle inside, and then read the glued-on pharmacy label. His Hisaunakai, two tablets daily to stay alive. Oh, that's a little abrupt. It doesn't really say that, but it could just as well. Well, I'm glad you clarified that. It's kind of twisted having your life depend on chemicals like this. I resent it a little, but what choice do I have? With a sigh, I begin my new daily ritual of taking the right number of pills from each bottle, being careful to check the correct dosages. I lie down again, feeling hot. Whoa, I skipped that. I apologize. Gotta, gotta watch my space bar finger. It doesn't seem, doesn't, it doesn't start looking any more familiar, not even after darkness falls and long shadows draw across my room like fingers. The sheets feel slightly more comfortable, warm and nest-like against the chill that passes for room temperature here. 
Soon the lighter shade of darkness that is the ceiling looks like every ceiling does at night, and it becomes the only thing I recognize anymore. The night beckons me to sleep and I feel the coldness of unfamiliarity and fear creeping up my spine once again, keep dr drifting further away from the world I knew. And here's our little transition meaning it is now the next day. I actually really like this transition. It's very well done. It takes a little longer than I would have liked, but it's still, I, I like that. That's a good transition. But guys, I think we'll continue next time on Katawa Shoujo. So, oh God, I apologize. That was a bit of my coffee I just drank before it coming up. Um, that's gross. I really apologize. Um, thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time back on Katawa Shoujo. Ciao.